7,500 undergraduates call the Hilltop home. These students come from all over the country and the world. While students and faculty readily discuss the cultural diversity at Georgetown, socioeconomic diversity is frequently overlooked. Many students feel hesitant to discuss their socioeconomic background amongst peers. Despite their different backgrounds, our discussions show most students share a common feeling of being outside the norm. Could you describe the typical socioeconomic background of a Georgetown student, what it looks like? I think most Georgetown students are upper middle class, and it's not like everybody's rich, but it's definitely weighted towards the upper middle class. Yeah, I'd have to agree. If you um, look at their clothing, like even the cars that they drive, it's pretty pretty expensive and pretty, um, I don't know, pretty high end, if you want to say that. Upper middle class? Um, I feel like there's not a huge range here at Georgetown, and I think a lot of people come from very wealthy families. I definitely, definitely uh, upper middle class, that's the answer to question, you know, I think a lot of people come from very prestigious backgrounds, so definitely upper middle class. Um, wealthy, uh, trust funds, you know, Alice in Greenwich drives, you know, a Porsche or a Maserati. You, like, described the stereotype as, like, an extremely wealthy stereotype. Do you, like, is your perception of that upheld by working in the financial aid office? Yeah. Um, I, I would say kind of, um, because although um, approximately 45% of the student body are on financial aid, um, there are, all, I mean, that leaves 65% that, or I'm sorry, 55% that aren't. How do you perceive your own socioeconomic background? Um, I perceive it to be, I mean, pretty good removed from Georgetown, but at, like in the context of Georgetown, it's different from everyone else's. Um, my mom's a teacher, um, and it's just me and my mom and my brother, and um, I started, you know, working, like, when I was, like, 15 or 16. I feel like one thing, a lot of people get jobs here for fun or for, like, influence rather than actually to make money. I do come from a definitely middle class, or maybe a whole middle class family. Um, and most of my friends, I feel like, tend to be in this, that same category. Well, I'm definitely not, you know, trust fund, house in Greenwich, you know, drives a Porsche. Um, I'm not, like, very bottom of the hierarchy, but uh, I would say probably middle class. Man, I think I'm poor compared to Georgetown. It's hard to say because it's all relative to what you're used to. So at Georgetown, I perceive mine as slightly lower than maybe the average, but in terms of America in large or DC in large, then I think I'm pretty well off. Do you feel like you dress a certain way to be perceived as something, or yeah. do you just dress because you know what I mean? Like, well, you have you have to like back in St. Louis. I feel as though there's a there's an actual there's like a cultural aspect to it, and also like a, like an ethnic aspect to it. If I wanted to go in like wear my like Jordan shoes with like a nice tee and like some um, nice jeans or whatever around here that stands out and that makes you I don't know it makes you more vulnerable to criticism and to um, be extracted as someone that's unnormal whereas if you're in a different circumstance a different uh, setting you would be perceived as right in. I think it just has to do with the culture and like what Georgetown is and the demographics in Georgetown. Have you had an experience at Georgetown that made you feel like you were set apart from your peers in terms of socioeconomics? Um, not not a specific experience, but I do feel like when I work, um, like work study jobs, I definitely meet people. I definitely identify more with people I work with rather than people who like I make most of my friends at my jobs at school. I guess is what I can say. rather than like in a club or something. Man, okay, so one time freshman year, so I was doing laundry, right? And then, like, you know, okay, when George has this thing that a machine where you swipe the car and then it shows the price. Son, I knew this place was, like, rich when some dude swiped the car. I'm going to say $5,000. I'm like, $5,000 on a go car? I'm like, come on now, like, this has got to be absurd. You look at my go car, man, you might see day to day, like, $4, you know what I'm saying, just enough. I'm going to be real with you. And then another circumstance was like, my friend Jack, uh, I went shopping with him one day, and this dude was offering to buy me shoes. I'm like, I'm like, what in the world? Like, this dude bought 10 shoes. Like, 
Most people in Georgetown haven't heard of shit shopping. You know what shit shopping is? See, me, I'm the type of person where it's like, you might go shit shopping with me because sometimes I don't like to buy something. You'd be like, hey, hey, yo, can I get that? I'm like, she, because I just can't afford it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, I mean, that's just my reality, so. <laughs> yeah, any more thoughts? Yeah, do you have a like about the divide? I guess that is perceived here. Uh, well, one thing I really think is I think people at Georgetown are obsessed with diversity, but they um, they often um, only see it in in the way of race or where you're, what country you're from. They're like, oh, you know, we have people from like all these countries, and you're like, yeah, but those are only the people in like the top one percent of those countries who can afford to come here. So like, I mean, it's not like you have like. It's, I mean, especially because it's harder to give aid to international kids, I feel like we're obsessed with diversity, but we often overlook socioeconomic diversity. Um, so that's just how I see it.